Number 26. Which is or which are part of the macroscopic domain of solutions and which is or which are part of the microscopic domain? So we have boiling point elevation, Henry's law, hydrogen bonding, ion dipole attractions, molarity, non-electrolyte, non-stoichiometric compound, osmosis, and a solvated ion. Which are part of macroscopic domains and which are part of microscopic domains? Well, let's list them out, right? Let's first collect all the ones that are part of the macroscopic, macroscopic domain. Now, just as a refresher, right, what is part of the macroscopic domain? Macro means big. So anything that's part of this domain is basically a big part of life, meaning that if you're part of macroscopic domain, you can be seen with everyday equipment. Think of like laboratory equipment, what's in your lab, um, as well as also the human eye. So we can use our laboratory equipment, everyday equipment, and um, it can be seen with that equipment and seen with the human eye. So the first one they say is boiling point elevation. A boiling point elevation, elevation means that uh, you are increasing, right? To elevate is to go up, depress is to go down. So boiling points will always go higher, they will always be elevated if they are in certain solutions. Can we see this raise or rising in boiling point with everyday equipment or seen with our human eye? Yeah, we could use a thermometer, right? We could mix up a solution and see the boiling point increase. So this would be part of the uh, macroscopic domain. The boiling point elevation. Next one is Henry's Law. Well, what is Henry's Law? Maybe I'll just write it down over here. Henry's Law is basically a concentration of a gas, they call it CG, so concentration of a gas, will equal the Henry's Law constant, which is categorized as lowercase k, times the pressure of the gas. So, if you change certain pressures, your concentration will change, given that your Henry's Law constant will uh, be the same. It's a constant value for whatever solution you're talking about. But in this case, we're dealing with concentrations, and just know that concentration is the same thing as a molarity. And molarity is known as the amount of moles that you have in a total solution. We can clearly see um, or uh, use everyday equipment to get a molarity, get a concentration, right? We also have everyday equipment that we can test for pressure values. Um, so in this case, Henry's law, seeing this type of exchange between concentration and pressure, is totally in the macroscopic domain. So Henry's law, put it right there. Next, hydrogen bonding. Now we say to ourselves, okay, can we use our lab equipment, right, our everyday equipment? Can we see with the human eye what a hydrogen bond looks like? Keep in mind that a hydrogen bond is that special bond between OHs, NHs, or FHs. We're talking about, um, you know, down at the molecular level. So anything that is at, you know, the molecular level is always part of the microscopic because that we can't use lab equipment. We can't see with the human eye. Um, so that's basically the difference between macro and micro. So if I just list out now microscopic domain, microscopic domain, this, we can't use equipment and we definitely cannot see with the human eye. Cannot be seen with human eye. And a hydrogen bond for sure 
is one of those. It's the molecular level all the way down to the nitty gritty. Um, so that would be a uh, hydrogen bond microscopic domain. Hydrogen bond. Okay, next we got ion dipole attractions. These are types of intermolecular forces. Hydrogen bond, intermolecular force. Ion dipole attraction, intermolecular force. That is at the molecular level. Any type of intermolecular forces. I mean, they have the word molecule, molecular um, in them. So all your intermolecular forces, they are way too small to be seen with the human eye. You can't use everyday lab equipment. So once again, this ion dipole attraction is going to be in the microscopic domain. Okay, so two for, two for macro, two for micro. Let's keep going. Molarity. We kind of went over this when we talked about Henry's Law with the concentration. Concentration is molarity, right? Tomato, tomato. And molarity just equals the amount of moles that you throw into a liter of solution. So you can clearly see um, the volume that you have of a certain solution. You can calculate the moles by finding out you know, how many grams you used. So molarity is a macroscopic. Can be seen with the human eye. A non-electrolyte. Would this be part of the macro or microscopic domain? Well, a non-electrolyte, by definition, is just a, a molecule or a compound, right? A molecule that does not conduct electricity, right? If I have a, a wire with a probe running into a certain substance and it's attached to a light bulb, right? We can use that everyday equipment to see with our human eye that it will not turn the light bulb on. That's a non-electrolyte. Um, example of a non-electrolyte is sugar, you know, glucose, C, uh, C6. <laughs> C12, C6, H12O6. All of your uh, covalent nonpolar molecules like, um, you know, H2, N2, O2, they're all non electrolytes. So this would be clearly seen uh, with macroscopic, uh, in the macroscopic domain, especially for, you know, sugar. So I'm going to put that down here. Okay, next, non-stoichiometric compound. That's an interesting word, non-stoichiometric compound. A non-stoichiometric compound is basically a compound that differs, I'll say differs from the normal ratios. The normal ratios that we know and love um, on the periodic table. So, for example, if I'm combining, you know, iron with oxygen. Right now, iron generally is a... Actually, I won't do iron because iron's a transition metal. To make it easier, maybe we'll put sodium. Right? Now, sodium is in group one. That means that the normal ratio sodium should be a plus one. Right? And oxygen, group 6A or 16, has always a charge of a negative 2. But let's just say non-stoichiometric, oopsie, the negative 3 may be turned into, a uh, negative 2 turned into a negative 3. And if we crisscross these values down, you will get a compound of Na3O. This is a non-stoichiometric compound because it does not abide by the normal ratio. The normal one should be Na2O. But non-stoichiometric compounds are just compounds that don't form the normal ratios that we use on the periodic table. But the question is, can, you know, if this compound actually exists, right? If a compound actually exists, can we see it, right? Because macroscopic, as you can see the compound, with, you know, a human eye, microscopic, you can't see it. But for compounds, especially for ionic compounds, these are going to be solids at room temperature. And if it's a solid, 
you're going to see it, right? Generally, we can't see gases, like any atmospheric gases. We can't see that with the human eye. But ionic ones, and the ones that we wrote here, at A3O, if this exists, um, it would be a solid. And solids can be seen. So non-stoichiometric compound is going in the macroscopic. Non-stoic. Key O. Met. Trick. A compound. Next, two more. Osmosis. Now, osmosis is the flow of water. So it's always the flow of water, so H2O. from an area from high amounts of H2O to low amounts of H2O. So high concentration of H2O to low concentration of H2O. But we'll just say that it's the flow of water in this case. Now, when water is flowing through membranes, usually it's with a semi-permeable membrane, you would either have three different solutions, right? So this is where hypertonic solutions can be made when you have way too much um, solute per solvent, you could have isotonic solutions, and then you could have hypotonic, hypotonic solutions. Can we see the difference between these types of solutions? Yeah, I mean, especially if you're talking about biology, um, with red blood cells and swelling red blood cells and shrinking, right, being flaccid or turgid if you're talking about um, plants, right, with their um, osmosis. So in this case, osmosis would be classified as a macroscopic domain. Can use everyday equipment to see the transfer of water from one um, part of the, you know, membrane to the other. And then the last one is a solvated ion. Now, ion they're talking about, this is at a very, very, very small level. Solvated means that it's being kind of like gobbled up, right? Generally, if you have an ion that's being solvated, it is being solvated by the solvent. So, for example, when you put your table salt, right, NaCl, into boiling water, what happens is the NaCl breaks apart, and sometimes the Na plus will be very, very far away from the Cl minus because there are higher intermolecular forces between the ions, the charges, and the water than if they were by themselves. So the positive Na will be surrounded by the negative parts of the oxygen in the water because opposites attract. So I'm just kind of drawing the oxygen, right? There's two lone pairs on the oxygen, um, but the negative always goes with the positive. In other ways, right, Cl minus, the positive hydrogens would want to be closer to the chlorine. This is solvation. When your solvent, which is generally water, is basically surrounding, it's solvating the ions. And this type of interaction, can we actually see the, uh, the water molecules surrounding the Na+, can we actually see the you know, specific water molecules surrounding the Cl-? No, we can't see it because when you throw salt in water, this is a homogeneous mixture. Right, depending on, you know, how much salt you add to your boiling water. But generally speaking, I mean, you could add a lot of salt and all of it will get solvated. Homogeneous mixtures, you can't tell the difference. So I can't see that with the human eye. This is a um, part of the microscopic domain, solvated ion. And it's part of the microscopic domain, not because it is a homogeneous mixture, but because of the actual chemical uh, activity that's going on down here. So maybe I'll just strip this away because I don't want you to get confused. Um, that we can't see this with our human eye. 
And that's why it's microscopic. I hope this helped. This is the answer. So you got how many? You got three for microscopic, one, two, three, four, five, and six for macro. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. Um, we got tons of videos on the channel just for you guys to make sure that you crush your exams and quizzes and chem. We also got physics and math videos if you guys are in those classes as well. We really love to help you out. My brother and I, we really do appreciate all of you that are using this channel to help you in your classes. Good luck to you. And keep studying hard, all right? Always keep learning, and I'll be here every step of the way for you, all right? So I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.